Carlton County. I'm going to uh, give you another demonstration of the war, of the Second World War. Uh, the next presentation I'm doing is the invasion of Holland. Uh, Case Yellow, which is the invasion of Holland, Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. Of course, uh, the Low Countries first. Case Yellow will be, um, this is the first part of Case Yellow, which I'll talk to, it's the invasion of Holland. So May 10th, here we have Ju-52 uh, Ju uh, Junkers uh, aircraft, which are dropping paratroopers all over Holland. The 10th of May, 1940, Nazi Germany invades. You can see here, this is just a quick demonstration, Netherlands and uh, 11th to the 12th of May. And how quickly it has happened within five days. The morning of the 15th of May, 40, under the threat of further bombardments, the Dutch army surrenders. Zealand does not surrender. And then Zealand does surrender on the 18th of May. Remaining Allied forces in Zealand, uh, Flanders surrender. So, the entirety of the Netherlands is occupied and is soon transformed into the uh, Reich Commandant. Reich Commandant. Mozart, Netherlands. Uh, I couldn't read all of it. Here's the official surrender. So last time we talked about, of course, the uh, the Norway invasion, uh, Wuzerenbund uh, Nord. This is uh, Foglil, or what they call Case Yellow, a German invasion of the Netherlands. On the 10th of May, 1940, the German army invaded the Netherlands. The start of five days of fighting that resulted in the occupation of the Netherlands. Why did Nazi Germany attack the Netherlands? How did the Dutch population respond? What happened in those five days? In 1940, the principle of Dutch foreign policy <clears throat> uh, was neutrality, as it had been for a century. The Netherlands had in avoided getting involved in international conflicts and would, like, uh, would only take sides when attacked. The strategy worked fine during the First World War. The Netherlands remained neutral, and, and the war passed by passed the country by. The Dutch government was therefore careful not to take an official stand on the situation in Nazi Germany. It did not want to give cause for hostilities. This resulted in some awkward situations with Dutch people who criticized the politics of Adolf Hitler being prosecuted for insulting a friendly head of state. Strategic interest of the Netherlands the planned attack on the Netherlands was part of a larger plan of attack, of which the code name was Falgelb. Falgelb, uh, or Case Yellow, the goal of the Germans was to conquer France overall. They wanted to bypass the French defense line at the eastern border by going through the Netherlands and Belgium. And that's the Maginot Line. They went, go right past, through the, past the Maginot Line. Their occupation of the Netherlands would also prevent England from setting up a base of operations on the European mainland. Germany planned to defeat Belgium, the, Nether the Netherlands, and Luxembourg by uh, catching them off guard in a swift attack, the so-called Blitzkrieg. The Germans used espionage to discover the weak points in the Dutch defense. Some German officers dressed up as tourists to map out the area, and they also received information from Germans living in the Netherlands, but not all German preparations were running smoothly. The Belgian army got hold of the uh, German attack plans when a, a German aircraft made an emergency landing in Belgium in early 1940. Hitler decided to postpone the attack. Subsequent bad weather conditions caused the attack to be postponed several times after that. So, um, for the Dutch main uh, defense line was the Isso Messelin Messilini, uh, a covering line along the rivers 
Azil and Maz, connected by positions in the in the Batui. Again, with pillboxes and lightly occupied by a screen of 14 border battalions. In late and that's in late 19, that's a small uh, border battalions. You know, basically um, border patrol units. Um, late 1939, General von uh, Vorst, Vorst uh, uh, reviving plans he had already worked out in 1937, proposed to make use of the excellent defensive opportunities these rivers offered. He proposed a swift uh, to a more mobile strategy by fighting a delayed battle at the plausible crossing sites near Arnhem and Gennep to force the German division to spend uh, much of their def offensive power before they reached the MDL and ideally even defeat them. Um, this was deemed too risky by the Dutch government and General uh, Reinders. Uh, the later, the later wanted the army to first offer heavy resistance at the uh, Grub Line and the Peel Ram um, position, and that's this is here is the Peel Ram position, um, and then fall back to the fortress, to, back to Fort Holland. This also was considered too dangerous by the government, especially in light of German air supremacy, and had the disadvantage of having to fully prepare two lines. Reinders had already been denied full military authority in the defense zones. And here uh, you can see to the left here the Peel Ram position and the positioning of troops here. Along the line here is Germany and here is Nijmegen, uh, Gennep, Uden, uh, Grave and uh, Ram and these defensive positions here. Given its obvious strategic importance, Belgium, though in principle neutral, had already made quite detailed arrangements for coordination uh, with Entente troops, and that's uh, Dutch and, uh, and uh, French troops. This made it difficult for the Dutch to have these plans changed again to suit their wishes. The Dutch desired the Belgians to connect their defense to the Peel Ram position that Reinders refused to abandon without uh, a fight. He did not approve of a plan by uh, Van Hurst to, to, Van Fust, to, Fust, to occupy a so-called orange position on the much shorter uh, line here's the Gordenbosch uh, Tilburg, Tilburg to form a continuous front with the Belgian lines near Turnhout as proposed by Belgian General Raoul von Overstraten. Overstraten, okay. So the French, um, in addition to the Dutch army and the German 18th army, a third force, not all that much smaller uh, than either, would operate on Dutch soil. The French 7th army, army, it had its own objectives within the larger French strategy. The, and French planning had long considered uh, the possibility uh, of operations in Dutch territory. The coastal regions of Zeeland and Holland were dif difficult to negotiate because of their many waterways. However, both the French and the Germans saw the possibility of a surprise flanking attack in this region. For the Germans, this would have the advantage of bypassing the antwerp nemur line. The Zeeland Isles, the Zeeland Isles were considered to be strategically critical as they uh, are just opposite the Thames estuary. So their capture would pose a special menace to the safety of England. Rapid forces, whether for an offensive or defensive purpose, were needed to deny vital locations to the enemy. Long before the Germans did, the French had contemplated using airborne troops to achieve speedy attacks. As early as 1936, the French had commissioned the design of light airborne tanks, but these plans had been abandoned in 1940, as they possessed no cargo plane uh, planes large enough to carry them. Um, a naval division and an 
Infantry Division were earmarked to depart for Zealand to block the western Scheldt against a German crossing. These would send forward forces um, over the Scheldt estuary into the Isles, uh, supplied by overseas shipping. And that's just some of the French strategy. Um, despite its policy of neutrality, the Netherlands was invaded on the morning of the 10th of May 1940 without a formal declaration of war by German forces moving simultaneously into Belgium and Luxembourg. The attackers meant to draw Allied forces away from the Ardennes and to lure British and French forces deeper into Belgium, but also to preempt a possible British invasion in North Holland. The Luftwaffe needed to take over the Dutch airfields on the Dutch coast to launch air raids against the United Kingdom. And here we have uh, Dutch paratroopers coming out of JU-52 JU uh, transport aircraft. Uh, one of the major um, attacks that was that had happened, major some of the major attacks that were happening in, in Holland were some of the largest airborne invasions um, to date that period of the war. Um, and these are offensive airborne strikes by the um, from the Luftwaffe and from the Wehrmacht. The Battle of the Netherlands, Dutch uh, Slimming Netherland. Uh, Slang um Netherland was a military campaign part of Case Yellow, of course, Fell Gelb. The German invasion of the Low Countries, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, and then, of course, in France during the Second World War. The, the battle lasted from the 10th of May for until the surrender of the main Dutch forces on the 14th of May. As you saw in the maps in the video earlier, um, Dutch troops in the province of Zeeland continued to resist the Wehrmacht until the 17th of May when Germany completed its occupation of the whole country. The Battle of the Netherlands saw some of the earliest mass uh, paratroop drops to occupy tactical points and assist the advance of German of ground troops. The German Luftwaffe uh, used paratroopers in the capture of several airfields in the vicinity of Rotterdam and The Hague helping to quickly overrun the country and immobilize Dutch forces. After, de after the devastating bombing of Rotterdam by the Luftwaffe on the 14th of May, the Germans threatened to bomb other Dutch cities if the Dutch forces refused to surrender. The general staff knew it could not stop the bombers and ordered the Dutch army to cease hostilities. The last occupied parts of the Netherlands were liberated in 1945. So, part of the 18th Division, uh, uh, 18th Army, and of course, um, so many divisions, and, and all across this whole operation, Case Yellow involved 750,000 men. And for so, for Belgium, France, or sorry, for Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg alone, 750,000 men, and which would lead to the beginning of the invasion of France through the Ardennes. 750,000 men, 22 divisions, 1,378 guns, 759 tanks, Panzer I's, Panzer II's, and, and Panzer III's, 800, 830 aircraft, and six armored trains. And here's more of the JU-52 uh, transport aircraft with the paratroopers. So one of the major field commanders Fitter von Bock. Bock served as the commander of Army Group North during the invasion of Poland in 1939, the Phony War, uh, commander of Army Group B during the invasion of France in 1940, and later as the commander of Army Group Center during the attack on the Soviet Union in Operation Barbarossa in 1941. His final command was that of Army Group South in 1942. So this is one of the main commanders of... Uh, Case Yellow, and the invasion of those three countries. Hans Goff von Spidok, uh, Sponek, sorry, von Sponek, on February of, 1st of February 1940, Sponek was promoted to General, General Lieutenant um, German Airborne Assault. The German Airborne Assault on the Low Countries began, which began on the uh, 10th of May 1940, led by Sponek, 
and General Kurt Student, which is another commander, uh, Sponak led the German troops in the failed battle for the Hague and was almost captured, only to be saved by the bombardment of Rotterdam um, on the 14th of May 1940, <clears throat> which quickly led to the Dutch capitulation. He was wounded and on his return to Germany was further awarded the Knight's Cross the, sorry, the Knight's nice Cross of the Iron Cross by Adolf Hitler. So, uh, one of the main command, the Dutch commanders, um, Henry Gerard Wilkinman, so born uh, 17th of August 1876 and survived uh, to this 27th of December 1952, was a Dutch military com officer who served as commander in chief of the armed forces of the Netherlands during. The German invasion of the during the German invasion of the Netherlands, and what the uh, the Dutch had was a large number of troops, 280,000 men, nine divisions, 700 guns, one tank, five tank tankettes, light tanks, 32 armored cars, and 145 aircraft. Mainly infantry. So. Um, and this is another one of the commanders here. Um, much time was lost due to these internal arguments, uh, to internal arguments um, in the high command of the Dutch military. And when Nazi Germany invaded the Netherlands in um, 10th of May, the Dutch armed forces were insignificantly prepared. Gottfried attempted to defend um, Grobeberg but was ultimately forced to withdraw to the west of the Netherlands. After the Rotterdam Blitz and the German threat to annihilate other Dutch cities, he advised Wilkenman to surrender. And that's him, uh, Gottfried. <clears throat> After the Battle of the Netherlands, he refused to pledge an oath of loyalty to the, to the Nazis. And as a consequence, he was sent together with his brother, H.F.M. Bonn, and Baron von Wartenvorst to a prisoner of war camp in Germany uh, for the five remaining years of the of the war. Following the end of, of Nazi Germany, he returned to the Netherlands, where he assumed various military and, and civil positions. In 1960, on the 80th on his 80th birthday, he was awarded uh, the titular rank of general. So. The French commander. When World War II began, Guerin, uh, Giraud, uh, which is uh, the commander here, General Giraud, was a member of the Supreme War Council and disagreed with Charles de Gaulle about the uh, tactics using armored troops. He began. He became the commander of the Seventh Army when it was sent to the Netherlands on uh, 10th of May, 1940 and was able to delay German troops at uh, Breda on the 13th of May. Subsequently, the depleted 7th Army was merged with the 9th while trying to block a German attack through the Ardennes. He was at the front with a reconnaissance patrol when he was captured by German troops at, uh, was he, uh, at Vazigny on the 19th of May. A court-martial tri uh, tried Gerode for ordering the execution of two German saboteurs wearing civilian clothes, but he was acquitted and taken to Königstein Castle near Dresden, which was used as a high security POW prison. So here is uh, like Panzer III's, uh, either in Rotterdam or maybe this is um, Amsterdam. The armed forces of the Netherlands, with insufficient and outdated weapons and equipment, were caught largely unprepared. Much of their weaponry had not changed since the First World War. In particular, the Royal Netherlands Army did not have comparable armored forces and could mount only a limited number of armored cars and tankettes. The Air Force had only 140 aircraft, 145, 140, mostly outdated biplanes. 65 of the Dutch aircraft were destroyed on the first day of the campaign. The invading forces advanced rapidly but faced significant resistance. 
a Wehrmacht parachute assault on the first day aimed at capturing the Dutch government in The Hague and the key airfields at Okenburg and Yipenburg, uh, I, at uh, Yipenburg were defeated by Dutch ground forces with heavy casualties. The Dutch succeeded in destroying significant numbers of transport aircraft that the uh, Germans would need for their planned invasion of Britain. And that's at Yipenburg. Uh, I have a picture of that on here. But the German forces succeeded in crossing the Maas River in the Netherlands on the first day, which allowed the Wehrmacht to outflank the nearby Belgian front, Iban uh, Iban Imau, and force the Belgian army to withdraw from the German border. <clears throat> in the eastern Netherlands, the Germans succeeded in pushing the Dutch back from the uh, from the group line, but their advance was slowed by the Dutch fortifications on the narrow F uh, <clears throat> Eswedding uh, causeway linked, linking the northeastern and northwestern parts of the Netherlands. The German forces advanced rapidly, and by the fourth day were in control of most of the east of the country. They did not control the major cities in the west. The Dutch realized neither British nor French troops would be able to reach the Netherlands in sufficient numbers to halt the invasion particularly given the speed of the German advance into Belgium. The attack on the Hague ended in operational failure. The paratroopers were unable to capture the main airfield at Ebenburg uh, in time for the airborne infantry to land safely in their, junk, in their Junkers um, transport aircraft. Though one armored car had been damaged by a bomb, the other five uh, Landsvergs assisted by machine gun emplacements, destroyed the 18 Junkers of the first two waves, killing many occupants. When the airstrip was blocked by Rex, the remaining waves aborted the landing and tried to find alternatives, often putting down their teams in meadows or on the beach, thus dispersing the troops. Here's the burning German Junkers, uh, Junkers uh, JU-852s at Eichenberg. Here they are, here's the picture. Here's uh, further um, Wehrmacht troops advancing into Holland. Um, so, meanwhile, the Dutch government had been to anticipate a German attack, had begun to anticipate a German attack. Soldiers were kept in service for a longer period, and all leave was cancelled. On the 19th of April 1940, the government even proclaimed martial law. This allowed them to censor sensitive, sensitive military information and to arrest persons who were considered a risk to national security. It was feared that Dutch NSB members, for instance, would help the Germans in the event of an invasion. The Dutch population was unaware of most government measures, although the military activities were visible. War seemed a long way off. The government tried not to raise the alarm and called on the population to stay calm and quietly focus on their normal activities. The rifle you see here is the Greer M95, also known uh, to collectors now uh, as the Dutch Manlincher. Um, with, this was the service rifle of the Dutch Armed Forces in 1940. And uh, of course it was uh, the M1895, so it was 1895 to 1940. And it replaced uh, the Baumont uh, Vitali um, which is another rifle before that. Um, um, and first introduced by Steyr for the Dutch, uh, this, but after 1904, production took place under the license, under license at Hem, Hembrung, uh, Ziedem in the Netherlands. So this is the main rifle of the Dutch army, 1940, which you see here. In the morning, of 10th of May 1940, Dutch observers saw bombers from the German Luftwaffe flying in the direction of the North Sea. They assumed they were uh, on their way to England once over sea. The, the planes made 180 degree turns and flew back. They made 180 degree turns and turned back to attack the Netherlands. The Netherlands was at war. Hitler justified the attack with a lie in an attempt to influence public opinion. 
he claimed that England and France had been planning the attack the German um, planning to attack the German rural area via the Netherlands and Belgium. Some German soldiers were therefore surprised when they never encountered any English soldiers in the Netherlands. Here's the man lecture again. This is in uh, one of the major battles in Holland. Here's more um, machine gun. Here's uh, some of the machine guns here used by the Dutch army. Here you see um, the Vickers machine gun. This is a British 3 3 machine gun that's used by the, the Dutch army at that time. They also used the World War I Lewis gun. The Vickers and the Lewis gun were World War I um, hand-me-downs, and, and they uh, still kept much of the weapons that were used in World War I. Um, MG-08, which is, of course, the German World War I uh, variant of the, you know, the MG-42, which is later on in the war, in the Second World War. Um, the Strauss MG uh, M07 heavy machine gun, uh, which is in some pictures, it's a German, also 8mm chambered machine gun. Um, these are some of the weapons that were used. Um, what you're looking at here is the is a 3.7 centimeter flat gun, uh, I think 36 or 37. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, Dutch anti-aircraft guns, uh, flat. 3.7 centimeter, of course, they're used by Nazi Germany, Romania. They're used by a bunch of, in it, or it's similar, similar type. It's used, uh, I think it's a 3.7, is that, or um, it's very similar to other types of them, like the Bofors 40 millimeter. It, it's, um, uh, there is a bunch of different types of them. And uh, these here, um, <clears throat> This one here is uh, just one of the few that the the Dutch army has. I think it's 3.7. I might be wrong, but um, so Germany's warlike stance and warnings from well-informed sources failed to alert the Dutch government to a str to the strong possibility that this that this time her neutrality would be violated. Thus, it was not until April 1940 that the Dutch armed forces were mobilized. Some Dutch officers who had misgivings about invading a neutral country informed the Dutch of the exact date of the invasion. <clears throat> the Dutch forces were placed on an alert on the morning of 10th of May 1940. Despite uh, the warning and many valiant acts of self-sacrifice, the Dutch invasion was over in five days, and Holland was forced to capitulate. After the war, the Dutch command was blamed for this poor performance, but in fact, there was little the Dutch could have done in the circumstances. The German high command was impressed by the tenacity of the Dutch army, but it had neither the equipment nor the appropriate training and experience to put up much more than a token resistance against the invading forces. Many Dutchmen avoided German capture and eventually reached England, where they continued to struggle. The army con uh, consisted of a small professional cutter of a uh, cadre of uh, 1,500 officers and 6,500 other ranks which were responsible for maintaining the, the military establishment and for the training of the annual intake of 60,000 conscripts who were eligible for 11 months military service between the ages of 20 and 40. The field army on mobilization numbered 114,000 men, or including reserves, 170,000 all ranks, 170, 180,000. The army was divided into four army corps based on Rotterdam, I'm uh, sorry, based on Amsterdam, Arnhem, Breda, and Armersfoort. Armersfoort. An army corps comprised of a corps staff, two infantry divisions, and one or two heavy artillery regiments, one independent artillery battalion, and a signals and reconnaissance battalion. In addition, there was a light brigade consisting of a staff signals battalion, armored car squadron, cyclist regiment, two hussar regiments, and one uh, two hussar regiments and one horse artillery regiment. 
and an anti-aircraft brigade with staff and two anti-aircraft regiments. So the Dutch Army uh, divisions in 1940, so eight plus two or three in reserve, infantry regiments, three, uh, each with uh, 2,691 men, uh, different uh, some infantry regiments, total men, so roughly about 280,000, roughly. 324 machine guns, 216 light Lewis M20 machine guns, 108 heavy uh, short horse um, M8-15, uh, MG08-15 machine guns, 18 heavy mortars, uh, 12 anti-tank guns, um, a number of artillery, maybe 12 to 24 guns, uh, maybe up to 32, but it depends, the, the numbers differ, different sources. Here's a Vickers machine gun, and here is one of the artillery, it looks like a 25 pounder, I could be wrong, what can that be? So, um, here, this is a Bofors, Bofors artillery unit, I think, I, I'm going to double check on this one. N note, uh, sorry, not only was the Dutch army poorly equipped, it was also poorly trained and there had especially been little experience gained in the handling of larger units above the battalion level. From 1932 until 1936, the Dutch army did not hold summer field maneuvers in order to conserve military funding. Also, the ind individual soldier lacked many necess necessary skills. Before the war, only a minority of young men eligible to serve in the military had actually been conscripted. Until 1938, those who were enlisted only served for 14, for, sorry, for 24 weeks, just enough to receive basic infantry training. That same year, service time was increased to 11 months. The low quality of conscripts was not compensated by a large body of professional military personnel. In 1940, there were only 1,206 professional, mil professional officers present. It had been hoped that when war threatened, um, these deficiencies could be could be quickly rem remedied. But following the mobilization of all Dutch forces on the 20th of August 1939, bringing army strength uh, to about 280,000 men, like I explained, readiness only slowly improved. Most available time uh, was spent cons constructing defenses, uh, and, and what I said the the line earlier that I mentioned, uh, the maps that I showed you earlier. Um, <clears throat> during this period, munition shortages limited live fire training. While unit cohesion remained low, by its own standards, the Dutch army in May 1940 was unfit for battle. It was incapable of staging an offensive, even at uh, an offensive, even at division level, while executing. Uh, maneuver warfare was far beyond its capabilities. German generals and tacticians, along with Hitler himself, had an equally low opinion of the Dutch military and expected that the core region of Holland uh, proper could be conquered in about three to five days. And he was right. In 1930, so the Dutch Air Force, in 1937, the Dutch government alarmed by Germany's warlike stance, embarked on a program of limited expansion and reorganization of the Air Army Air Force. The Air Force remained part of the Army, but because a semi-independent arm to which was added in November 1938, the, the anti-aircraft artillery, searchlight sections, and Air Observer Corps, and the whole was designated Air, Air Defense Command. In May 1940, the active element of the Army Air Force was divided into two air regiments, the first consisting of four fighter squadrons, one bomber and one reconnaissance squadron, and the second consisting of four reconnaissance wings and two fighter squadrons. It was decided to replace the obsolete aircraft then in service, Fokker D, um, Fokker D7 fighters from World War I and Fokker CL and CV two-seater reconnaissance planes and orders were sent out for 36 Fokker 
um, D21 uh, single seater fighters and 16 Fokker T T5 bombers. Um, see picture of the the D the D21 fighters escorting uh, Fokker uh, heavy bombers. There are some more. There's some pictures. They might I might have them. I might not. I'm not sure. 36 Fokker um, G one uh, A twin engine fighters, and from the United States, 18 Douglas DB eight A N three attack bombers. Uh, that'd be DC three based. Uh, a further 23 Curtis Hawk 75A single seat fighters were also ordered, but these were not delivered by the invasion. On the 10th of May 1940, the Army Air Force uh, Service had 139 operational aircraft at its disposal. Although not all of them were the newer types, but nearly all of these were destroyed as a result of the German surprise attacks on Dutch airfields. And that's including JU-87B uh, uh, Junkers uh, fighter bombers, um, dive bombers, Stukas, the Stuka dive bombers. Personal losses were about 8,000, which included 500 men taken prisoner. Uh, Kulhoven, uh, this the FK uh, 58, uh, one of the, um, at the time, one of the in service Dutch Air Force fighters. The Dutch Navy, before the war, the Dutch Navy in uh, European waters was intended primarily for local coastal defense and mine laying work in the North Sea. Its most powerful units were stationed in the Dutch East Indies. By 1939, however, new warships were being constructed, which were suitable for both, uh, the, far, uh, both the Far East and uh, Europe. In May 1940, the Chief of Naval Staff and the Commander-in-Chief of Naval Forces was Vice Admiral J. T. H. Uh, Firstner. Personnel was 11,750 men, including Marines. They had four cruisers, eight destroyers, 23 submarines, seven escort patrol vessels, escort and patrol vessels, five motor uh, torpedo boats, 281 minesweepers. The Navy had played a limited, if courageous, role in the Battle for Holland. <clears throat> Ships patrolled uh, the, the coastline, giving supporting fire to land forces. And in one unique instance, a Dutch ship shelled uh, a beach on which German troop carrying aircraft were landing. Small craft insisted by um, transporting troops and supplies, of course. Um, when defeat became inevitable, Dutch ships ferried troops across the sea and 20,000 men reached Britain. Here's one of their uh, destroyers. On, on the 10th of May, from 1940, for the Corps Mariners, the Dutch Marines, originally formed um, Mariners, um, originally formed in 1665 and in action against the English in 1667, were stationed in Rotterdam. The Rotterdam garrison included 100 trained conscripts, first class, 100 third class, and 100 with only three months service. At the naval depot, there were a further 150 Marines, 90 conscripts, and 600 new recruits. Despite their small number and lack of training, the Marines fought stubbornly against German parachute troops, both on the Zinder, uh, on the Zuderli and in defense of the Maas bridges in Rotterdam, at Rotterdam, until the 14th of May 1940. They surrendered together with all other forces in Holland. The Germans came through the Dutch province of North uh, Brabant, uh, Brabant without any Dutch or French resistance. The Dutch and French uh, communications were terrible. There were enough troops in the region, and Allied generals were apparently not able to organize any defense line at all. Up here, 10th of May. The 10th, the 14th of May, and then here's the 12th, 14th of May. Rotterdam with the paratroopers. And pushing inward and down from the 14th to the 17th of May, directly into Belgium. <clears throat> 
German invasion of the Low Countries in France in 1940. Okay, so here, Army Group B, von Bock. Army Group A, Rundstedt. Army Group C, Lieb. Uh, these are the, uh, so Army Group A, B, and C, and pushing in through uh, the Netherlands, and then in through into Belgium, and uh, through Leopold, um, and of course here we uh, we have the seventh French um, and the Gr uh, Grun, which was fighting in Holland, um, Blanchard the first, and Gr uh, Grod, which also commanded the ninth um, ninth division infantry of the French army. Um, so the encirclement, the pushing, and then the encirclement. Um, for focusing on the Netherlands, okay, so up top you have the 10th of May and the 11th and then 12th of May and then uh, the Greb line, Greb line and the Peel line and that was the 11th and 12th uh, of May and then finally Utrecht, Utrecht, which is where my um, Dutch grandparents lived uh, and then The Hague and then Amsterdam and uh, and that was all, and that was taken on the, with the 13th, and then, of course, um, and 14th of May. And then up here is the area they held on to until the, uh, much of the fighting until the 17th, up north of Amsterdam in that little spot. Here's the Allied lines in the blue, German lines in the red, German advance. Um, so the Allies at the beginning of the war of course, right here along this line, and subsequent allies, of course, that was all cut back in those days, early in the, in May, uh, in mid-May, 1940. So and here's the acts of power at the beginning of the war, and neutral countries, uh, Luxembourg, and there you can see small how small Luxembourg is below Belgium, uh, very quickly. Um, advance through in Switzerland which remains neutral the Germans had some of the best uh, equipped tanks in the field uh, the Char B the French Char B would have been one that's uh, struck well I should say heavier more heavily armored I'll say okay so but the Panzer II which what we're talking about here um, this one video here the Panzer II Although the vehicle had originally been designed as a stop gap, while larger, more advanced tanks were developed, it nonetheless went uh, on to play an important role in the early early years of, of the war. And certainly, this tank um, had been uh, used in, of course, Holland uh, with Case Yellow, Luxembourg, and, of course, in two of the French campaigns as well. Uh, Belgium, Holland, and France. Um, its design um, was one of the most numerous tanks of the German campaign. And uh, I just want to show that video here. So here, used in Blitzkrieg, the Blitzkrieg design uh, certainly incorporated this tank on a massive scale. Was one of the most numerous tanks used in the war at the certainly at the beginning of the war and is even used uh, in North Africa against the Western Allies and even against in uh, operations in the Soviet Union um, <clears throat> see here so you here there is here's part of the design this is a, its hull structure design um, it is so it it's supplanted by the Panzer of course supplanted by the Panzer III and Panzer IV medium tanks 1940-1941 is uh, by the end of 1942 it became it was removed largely from service but this is one of the main tanks used in Holland one thing to remember about the Wehrmacht is that the German army, uh, even if their officers are cut down, um, you have soldiers from anywhere from corporal to sergeant um, that are, are capable in that rank 
that are capable of trained able to take control of a unit that is much larger in size than their rank that's why they're the way they're trained they're multi-trained the Wehrmacht has been trained so ingeniously uh, in such ways it's trained uh, multi-trained in so many more ways that uh, the French the British Army uh, and other armies are taken certainly taken aback by it Blitzkrieg is a whole new way of warfare the training that the Germans have the Wehrmacht has is a whole new way mo and it leads to the modern military uh, it's a role model for what became uh, for what our modern militaries are today cross trained cross equipped certainly the Canadian Army and uh, and a lot of NATO NATO countries being cross trained um, is something that the Germans really took strongly um, in it in uh, training and in adv advances and also physical fitness as well as being able to take control of units um, if you're um, a junior um, a junior officer you can take over from officers that are much higher rank than you uh, in on in a, on a company level and lead them in in battle that's the training that comes in alongside this um, here we see Poland and then the push in through to um, Brussels and and Belgium and of course here you have soon which will lead in this is the beginning of the invasion of France so the failed attack on the Hague bomber attacked uh, the military airfields and the barracks around the Hague. Of course, the failed attack on the Hague bombers um, attacked the military airfields uh, and barracks is around the Hague, and that's the, uh, of course, the government headquarters. Paratroopers descended, and, and German planes dropped the soldiers who hoped for a quick victory by taking Queen Wilhelm Wilhelmina and the government hostage. The plan failed thanks to the fierce opposition of the Dutch soldiers and blunders made on the German side. German bombers attack Holland, of course, on uh, old, uh, early morning of old 55 on May 10th, um, 1940. A target was well have an airfield to the south of Rotterdam. One hour later, a battalion of paratroopers was dropped onto the airfield. Dutch troops based at Wellhaven put up a fierce resistance, but it was in vain. As with all early Blitzkrieg attacks, the Germans had the element of surprise while Wellhaven was being taken. Um, a perfect base for the Luftwaffe to use. More paratroopers landed at um, Dorstead, Dorstrecht, uh, 10 miles to the southeast of Wellhaven. Their task was to capture a vital bridge in the town. Such a prize would greatly assist the Germans' ability to move vehicles in their assault on Holland. As a result of the waterways that uh, dissect Holland, uh, small naval craft played a large part in the attempts to stop the invasion. They had been reasonably successful but only delayed the inevitable. However, their perceived success persuaded the, the commander-in-chief of the Royal Netherlands Navy, Vice Admiral Furstner, that more uh, ships should be sent to the inland waterways to attack the Germans. To this end, the destroyer Van Galen was sent up the uh, newer waterway and became an easy target for German bombers. The narrow waterways ended any chance the destroyer had of changing her course. She was essentially struck in the uh, newer water rig, um, through the Van Galen, uh, uh, and of course she was essentially stuck there in the, in the water rig, sorry. Um, through the Van Galen uh, did not receive a direct hit. Many near misses had done so much damage uh, to the ship, and she limped through the uh, Merwin Harbor, incapable of uh, continuing the fight. Though the journey of the Van Galen had been uh, futile, uh, it typified the attempts uh, by the Dutch to fight off the enemy. Here we have the Wehrmacht forces. The Dutch Air Force did the same. The airfield at Welthaven was attacked four times by the Dutch um, 
after it had, it had fallen to the Germans, and many German planes were lost. But despite their bravery, it was only inevitable that the Germans would be victorious. By the end of May 10th, uh, the Germans uh, had captured Wellhaven Air Base and the vital bridge at, Dor at Dordrecht. The southern sector of Rotterdam had been occupied, and the Germans were in the perfect position to attack the heart of Holland's most important commercial center. <clears throat> Wellhaven was used to bring in German troops. This was achieved by 250 Junkers, uh, Junkers uh, 52 transport planes bringing in troops. Holland was in irritation in the great scheme of the attack on France. The sooner the Germans could take out Holland, the sooner they could uh, concentrate all their resources on France. For this reason, they wanted to shock the politicians of Holland into surrendering. Rotterdam was the was to to pay the price for this, and with the fire with the heavy bombing of Rotterdam carpet bombing, the Germans decided to launch a ferocious attack on Rotterdam that would have such an impact that the government of Holland would initiate a surrender. On the 14th of May, the attack on Rotterdam started. The Germans used the excuse for such an attack that British troops had landed by the Maas River. Um, sorry, on, I'll read it again. On 14th of, of uh, May, the attack on Rotterdam started. The Germans used the excuse for such an attack by that, that uh, British troops had landed on by the Maas River thus endangering German troops based in the area. No such landing had taken place by the British. The attack started at 13.30 hours, and within five hours the Germans entered the city of Rotterdam. There were 30,000 civilian casualties. <clears throat> Over the next two days, the Germans conquered the rest of Holland. However, they did, they did Meet uh, with res they did meet uh, with resistance, especially at the Edinburgh and Alkenburg air bases. At Edinburgh, uh, eleven German transport planes were shot down out of a total of thirteen. Such was the ferocity of the defenders at Alkenburg that, that German transport planes landed on the soft sand dunes. Um, that German transport planes landed on the soft sand dunes uh, that were near to the airbase. Um, certainly, yes, a defensive position. Despite all her, all their heroics, the Dutch Air Force lost 62 aircraft out of 125 on the 10th of May alone. Despite such losses, they continued attacking the Germans and inflicting damage up until Holland surrendered. For their valor, the Dutch Air Force was awarded the, the military William Force, the Dutch equivalent of the Victoria Cross. The threat to bomb Utrecht persuaded the Dutch government to surrender. On the 14th of, of May, a message was sent out to all Dutch forces to lay down their arms. Commanders were ordered to stop fighting and to destroy all ammunition. Skirmishes continued until May 16th. The Dutch command and leadership often left much to be desired. Another important factor in the failure to finish off the German airborne troops was lack of insight into the real strength of the German troops. Lieutenant Commander S.C. Van Oosten. The Dutch High Command was shocked by the Rotterdam Blitz, knowing the army was running low on supplies and ammunition. And after receiving news uh, that the city of Utrecht had been given an ultimatum uh, similar to that of Rotterdam. Wilkenman, General Wilkenman, uh, held a meeting with other Dutch generals. They decided that further resistance was futile and wanted to protect civilian residents. In the afternoon of 14th of May, Wilkenman issued a proclamation to his army, ordering them to surrender. Here's a picture. Here you can see uh, the bombing of uh, Rotterdam, and he's, uh, so this is on the 14th of May. Um, complete, a lot of devastation. It's, these are some old videos. This is right, uh, taken right after. Um, and this is 
the city of Rotterdam here, which you can see. <clears throat> and what happens is, of course, 30,000 casualties. So many people are killed. Um, it's heavy bombing, so they're bombing downtown directly. Um, Let's see, here's the city. Bombardment. As you can see, here are the, uh, the Wehrmacht. These are um, JU-88, uh, well, actually, uh, Heinkel HE-111s, uh, JU-88 bombers. Um, um, of the uh, Luftwaffe uh, heavy uh, medium bomber command, and this is all Dutch footage of the heavy bombing of Rotterdam. Ill prepared, uh, the threat to Utrecht was enough for them to um, initiate uh, capitulation. This afternoon, uh, Germany bombed Rotterdam. Well, uh, Utrecht was also been had been threatened by with destruction. In order to uh, spare the civilian popu the civil population and to prevent further bloodshed, uh, I feel myself justified in ordering all troops um, concerned to suspend operations. And that's uh, as commanding general. Um, we'll see. By great superiority of the most modern means, the enemy has succeeded in breaking our resistance. We have nothing wherewith to reapproach ourselves in connection with this war. Your bearing and that of the forces was calm, firm, uh, uh, firm of purpose, and worthy of the Netherlands. That's proclamation of General Wilkenman, 14th of uh, May 1940. On the 15th, the Netherlands officially signed the surrender with Germany. Dutch forces in the province of Zeeland, which had come under French control, continued fighting alongside French forces until 17th of May. When the, the bombardment of the town of Middelburg forced them to surrender also. The Dutch Empire in particular, the Dutch East Indies, supported the Allied side. The colonies were unaffected by the surrender. Many ships of the Royal Dutch Navy in Dutch waters fled to the United Kingdom. During the four-day campaign, about 2,300 Dutch soldiers were killed and 7,000 wounded, while more than 3,000 Dutch civilians also died in the four-day campaign, and that's not including uh, the, the 30,000 killed in, at the, uh, in uh, Rotterdam. The invasion Invading army lost 2,200 men uh, killed and 7,000 wounded. So just uh, a little bit less than the uh, the Dutch, the Wehrmacht, had lost about that amount. Uh, 2,200 killed and 7,000 wounded. In addition, 1,300 German soldiers captured by the Dutch uh, during the campaign. Um, <clears throat> many around the Hague had been shipped to Britain, to England, and remained POWs for the rest of the war. So here you can see uh, another um, photo of the push down in through to Belgium on the 14th. The Dutch situation just before the Rotterdam Blitz, uh, the legend, location of the Dutch defense lines and area within Dutch troops are uh, present, heavy Dutch Defense line against the armored vehicles. Uh, this is all in color coded. <clears throat> so, um, despite his pessimism uh, expressed to the Dutch government and the mandate he had been given to surrender the army, General Wilkenman uh, evaded um, the outcome of events, avoiding actually capitulating until it was absolutely necessary. In this, he was perhaps motivated by a, a desire to engage the opposing German troops for as long as possible to assist the Allied war effort. 
In the early morning of the 14th of May, though the situation remained critical, a certain calm was evident in the Dutch headquarters. So life in the occupied Netherlands. Um, initially, the Netherlands was placed under, Ger under German military control. However, following the refusal of the Dutch government to return, the Netherlands was placed under control by a German civilian governor on the 29th of May, 1940. Unlike, Frank or, oh, unlike France or Denmark, which had their own governments, and Belgium, which was under German military control, the civilian government, the civil government, uh, the Reich Kommissarat uh, Nederland, Nederland uh, was headed by the Austrian uh, Nazi Arthur uh, Seyss uh, Inkert. Inkert, uh, Inkert. The German occupiers. Uh, implemented a policy of uh, guarded shelter, enforced uh, conformity, and enforced conformity, and systematically eliminating non-Nazi organizations. In 1940, the German regime more or less immediately outlawed, outlawed all socialist and communist parties. In 1941, it forbid all parties except for the National Socialist Movement in the Netherlands. Guarded shelter was an enormous shock to the Dutch, who had traditionally had separate institutions for all main religious groups, particularly Catholic and Protestant, because of decades of pillarization. Uh, the process was opposed by the Catholic Church in the Netherlands, and in 1941 all Roman Catholics were urged by Dutch bishops to leave associations that had been Nazified. A long-term aim of the Nazis was to incorporate the Netherlands into the Greater Germanic Reich. Um, Hitler, though very highly, thought very highly of the Dutch people, who were considered to be fellow members of the Aryan master race. So here we have food stamps. There's a picture of some food stamps, uh, and um, for uh, under the, of course, under German occupation. The Luftwaffe was especially interested in the Netherlands, as a country, uh, as the country was uh, designated to become the main area for the air force bases from which to attack the United Kingdom. The Germans started construction of ten major military bases, air bases, on uh, the day after the formal Dutch surrender on the 15th of May 1940. And they also launched uh, bomber attacks, of course, directly from. Um, from France as well. Um, each of these was intended to have at least two or three hard surface runways, a dedicated rail connection, major buildup of and heat repair and overall facilities, and overall facilities, extensive indoor and outdoor storage spaces, and most had housing and facilities for 2,000 to 3,000 men. Each airbase had also had an auxiliary and often a decoy airfield, complete with mock-up planes made from plywood. The largest became Dielen Air Base, north of Arnhem. Uh, Twelve former German buildings at Dielen are now national monuments. Adjacent to Dielen, the large central air control bunker for Belgium and the Netherlands, uh, Diogenes, was set up. Diogenes was set up. Within a year, the attack strategy had to be altered to a defensive operation. Within a year, the attack strategy had to be altered to um, a defensive position. Ensuing air, uh, war, the ensuing air war over the Netherlands cost uh, almost 20,000 airmen, Allied and, and German, and their lives and 6,000 planes went down over the country, an average of three per day during the five years of the war. The Netherlands turned out into the first line of uh, Western air defense um, for Germany and its industrial heartland of the uh, the, of the Reich the Reichsgruppe, uh, complete with extensive flak um, uh, complete. I'm trying to say that word, complete with extensive flak sound detection installations and latest radar. The first German night hunter squadron started its operations from the Netherlands. Some 30,000 Luftwaffe men and women were involved in the Netherlands throughout the war. 
removal the removal of Dutch military presence in the continental European theater. Um, the Dutch government uh, goes, of course, into exile in, in, of course, the United Kingdom. So this is going into the um, into the Netherlands, uh, going from the Netherlands into the United Kingdom. Sorry, I got a message. So from the Netherlands to the United Kingdom, the the Dutch government is in exile. So the initial report on this is. Uh, now this is what I'm trying to play in here. The initial report on Rotterdam was 30,000 dead, but and then what happens is that they find out afterward there are only 1,000 dead, luckily. But they're thinking that there were a lot more. There were reportedly at first 30,000 dead, and uh, so there is only 1,000 killed in the Rotterdam bombing, and uh, so yeah. I just want to make sure people are paying attention. I said that 30,000, I was trying to get people to go right to the end. And uh, I will put note that there was, uh, finding out later on, there was only 1,000 dead. Okay. Um, so, for the Dutch, um, in total campaign, 2,332 killed in military, 7,000 wounded. Um and of course, uh, plus 2,000 plus civilians. There's 2,000 plus civilians killed in the whole campaign. Um, 600, so for the French, 216 killed, France. Um, and 43 killed from Great Britain. That's, uh, I believe that's air and, uh, and from another small unit. But no, because they didn't land at the Moss, the Germans thought uh, it was air power, I believe. Um, the Germans, 2,032 killed, 6 to 7,000 wounded, 4 armored trains destroyed, 225 uh, to 275 aircraft destroyed, and 1,350 captured um, Wehrmacht troops sent to England. Um, so they were sent to England um, for the rest of the war. And only 1,000 killed up in, in the Rotterdam bombing. So I wanted to, I knew that, but I wanted to um, see. And then uh, right after that, I wanted to wait until afterward and give you the end result. It was actually only 1,000. Turns out uh, they thought that for a number of hours, but then um, directly afterward, um, they start finding out what the actual casualty count is in the, the Rotterdam. And uh, so... I'll read this. At first, the Dutch government announced a death toll of around 30,000 civilians. This was later found to be incorrect. Well, the exact number of those killed is still protested. It's still contested. So, it's around 1,000, but it's still contested. It is believed that around 1,000 people were killed during the bombings. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much.